Every once in a while, you come across something that you've been doing for a really long time, and all of a sudden you get this validation that it has other benefits outside of what you've been using it for. Nutritional yeast, I put it on everything. When it comes to recovery and overall muscle recovery after a workout, there's some very, very promising new research. And then we have to back up and look at some of the other data that comes uh, previously surrounding epigenetics and how nutritional yeast could be playing a role with this. So let's go ahead and dive in. First, if you want to save 25% off your whole grocery order through Thrive Market, there's a special link down below. So that link is only for people that watch my videos. That is a 25% off your entire grocery order link. Plus, you get a free gift when you check out. So if you use that link, you go to Thrive Market, you can shop for your different groceries. They have almost everything you would find at Whole Foods, realistically, plus a bunch of other stuff, and usually at better prices. So cool thing is, you don't have to go to the grocery store, you can sit from the comfort of your home or your phone or your tablet or whatever. It just makes it that easy, and then everything just gets delivered to your doorstep. So the cool thing is, go ham the first time you order with them, because that link is gonna save you 25% off your entire first order. So load up on your groceries, stock up that pantry, get your regenerative meat and seafood options as well, because it's all there in that link down below. Okay, so nutritional yeast, I don't need to go into detail what it is. It's like the cheesy, kind of flaky stuff that has a cheesy-like taste super rich in B vitamins, all that stuff. But I wanna focus on this recovery article that was just published not that long ago. So the study was published in the journal Nutrients, and it looked at subjects that consumed what are called yeast beta-glucans. Beta-glucans are a specific kind of fiber that is in nutritional yeast. It's also in some things like oatmeal, but in this particular case, yeast beta-glucans would be more specific to like nutritional yeast. It's the beta-glucans, the fiber, the prebiotic fiber that comes from a yeast beta-glucan. So in this case, they took a group of people and they divided them into two groups. Okay, one group consumed 250 milligrams of yeast beta-glucans, and the other group consumed a placebo. And they did this for 13 days. And what they did is in the morning, in a fasted state, they had them go into the gym and do a workout. They had them run at 55% of their VO2 max. So it was a controlled effort workout. Okay, and then they measured a bunch of different biomarkers after the workout. Now, it's pretty normal, very normal, 100% normal, after a workout to have an inflammatory response. Okay, that is because your body is recovering. You just did damage. Now your body has to kick in the immune system and start to repair. So normally it looks like this. Normally you have like a surge of normal white blood cells, a normal uh, surge of monocytes, kind of innate immune system activity that kind of goes up high and that starts the inflammatory process to kind of recover. Then after that, you move into what is called the regenerative and remodeling phase, where the immune system is still mildly activated, but it becomes much more about rebuilding and using proteins to synthesize. And then after that, you have myoglobin that decreases and kind of life goes on. So there's some ways that you can measure this, and this study did just that. They measured what is called macrophage inflammatory protein 1 beta, or MIP1 beta. This MIP1 beta is what goes up shortly after a workout and stays elevated for a period of time to neutralize the uh, or deal with the stress of the workout. Well, what they found is that the group that had the yeast beta glucans had a significantly less or a significant reduction in this MIP1 beta. Okay, it was a 17.9% increase for the group that had the placebo and an 8.9% decrease for the group that had the yeast beta-glucans. That is a significant difference. Now, additionally, there were small reductions in interleukin-8 and also MCP1, which are also just kind of smaller inflammatory responses. They were statistically insignificant, so I don't want to go down that rabbit hole too much. But what does this really mean? Well, what it means is that the group that had the yeast beta-glucans accelerated through the initial inflammatory phase much faster. By the time they looked at the biomarkers, that group was already through most of that process, and they had moved on to a regenerating and remodeling phase where the immune system is not nearly as involved, or an immune response would be not favorable. So this is tremendous. What does it mean? Is it helping muscle recovery? Not necessarily. It's helping the immune system from the innate and also adaptive response in some ways. 
the innate immune system deals with these sort of intrinsic things, these things that happen like this where the body can regulate it. So beta-glucans, if you look at some of the other data and how it affects uh, at an epigenetic level a monocyte, an immune cell, we know that, or at least we think we know, that they play a role as a signaling device in how the immune system works. So it's not about it directly affecting muscle recovery, it's about it indirectly affecting muscle recovery by affecting the immune response so that we don't have an overwhelming immune response. We have just enough immune response that is acute and is proper to deal with the inflammation from workout and then allow the next phase to move on, right? Or to move into that next phase. Now, what they found additionally is 72 hours later, myoglobin levels were decreased. Now, this is a good sign because it just confirms what we are speculating here. If myoglobin levels are decreasing, that means that the remodeling and restructuring phase has occurred and is kind of coming to a close. Protein synthesis kind of happened and we're having less of these damage particles present. Like if we see high levels of myoglobin, then we know, okay, then maybe there is some muscle damage, but that level seemed to go down, meaning the tissue had been repaired. So it's not like sprinkling yeast on your muscles is going to directly make them recover better. I think we underestimate how much our immune system is involved in a workout. That's why if you push it really hard with your workouts all the time, you crush your immune system and you might get more sick. But if you strategically work out, then it can actually build your immune system. And these beta-glucans, what they are is they are a fiber that allows for the short-chain fatty acids to form from the bacteria that eat that fiber. And these short-chain fatty acids regulate our T and B cell function as well as much of our innate immune system. Very interesting stuff. So load up the nutritional yeast on the chicken, load it up on the veggies, and have a heyday. I'll see you tomorrow.